it's almost like we, we talk about the fact that there really is no neutral, that if you're not practicing and growing and getting better, it's impossible to stay the same. Like you will get worse. Mm -hmm. And I would think that's a direct correlation to what you're doing. Like if you train a dog to a certain point and then you just stop, it will not stay at that level. It will only digress over time. Like there's well, it'll, the only... It'll go to what makes it more pleasurable for itself. Which is, man, that's profound, yeah. Right, like yeah, yeah. that's what dogs want. They mm -hmm. want to increase pleasure and yeah. de decrease that's pain. That's what people want as well. It's the it's same the exact same, same thing. thing. And so the interesting thing in that is I've been learning a lot lately about how like the actual brain works in that if you try to stay the same, if my goal is just like to maintain where I'm at, that your brain will literally create right. problems because you were born to fix things, you were born to accomplish, you were born to solve problems. And so you're literally, your brain will create problems, struggles, and things for you to have to overcome just to be able to stay the same. Right. Which is crazy. And the same amount of effort that it's gonna, that it's gonna take for you to get to the next level, it's gonna take that same amount of effort for you to stay the same. Right. Because your body literally will create a scenario for you to have to overcome because that's just what you, that's what humans are born to do. They're born to, to fix problems and to, and to overcome struggles, which when you get to that level of it, that to me is like the ultimate um, encouragement right. in trying to get people to be constant learners and constantly growing and constantly you know, refining their craft. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. I'm Chris Buell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Yes, that was like perfectly timed. Right on time. Most of the time we have guests on, they're just like, uh, 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 was that? Oh, crap, I missed <laughs> it. Right, we'll try it on the back end. <laughs> uh, but this is the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 83. And uh, we're actually gonna give a title to this episode, which is Working Like a Dog. And you'll figure out why in just a second. Uh, but obviously we got a special guest. This is not Joseph Caldwell, our normal uh, co-host on the podcast, but we got uh, Chris Buell here. And uh, we were actually together this morning and you'll find out why. Uh, but based on his occupation and the business that he runs, uh, I saw this immediate uh, an immediate comparison to what we do here on the Sales Wolves podcast, which the reason why we do this show is to show support and appreciation for salespeople, but also to provide practical training and things that they can go out and, and put into use and it will impact their business and just impact their lives. Uh, so we'll kind of unpack that and why that I saw that comparison uh, when you hear a little bit more about Chris's story. Uh, so Chris, definitely glad obviously that you're here. Yeah. Um, thank you for being here. And just tell everybody a little bit about your story. I know you said it was an interesting one as yeah. far as how you got to where you are now yeah. and, and what you're doing now. So give, give everybody a little bit of idea of who you are and kind of what you're doing. And then we'll just kind of start this conversation about the comparison and what you do and what we do. Right. Well, thanks for having me on, yeah, man. I appreciate it a lot. Um, so the crazy story about like how I got into my profession was it wasn't even something that I was looking to do. It wasn't even on the radar. I didn't even think about it. But it had everything to do with my wife finding our first dog. Hmm. Right, so she, we were living in Florida. She found, she actually almost hit the dog because huh. it was running across the street. Yeah. And uh, she picked it up and she immediately called me. And like the first thing that I said, I go, well, is he cute? Like, <laughs> she's like, I don't know. Like, what, <laughs> what kind of question is that? Um, but he's like a little 20 pound mix. He's got like a big little bushy tail. He's huh. just a little firecracker. Um, but he was kind of messed up. He had scars, he had fleas, yeah. he had mange. Um, and he'd been living on the streets yeah. for a while. Yeah. So we took him in. We realized very quickly that we needed to do some sort of training. Hmm. Um, and we started off with just like your typical, like here's some food, right? Let's do some food training, yeah. clicker training, like positive only stuff, yeah. right? And very quick, we learned that that does not work <laughs> in the real environment, sure. right? In the house, it was great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like 
killing it, doing all the commands. But as soon as he got outside where he was really comfortable yeah. and he had been doing, like chasing all the mm-hmm. rodents, chasing lizards, <laughs> um, chasing down just like these other animals that were all around yeah. town. And it's crazy. Like sometimes <laughs> I can't even explain it, but he's a savage. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's a beast. Um, so then one of our friends actually had their dog trained with off-leash canine training in Florida. Hmm. Um, and so we first started out, we saw that their results were incredible, right? And then we did basic obedience. So it was four private lessons okay. with them. Uh, and it completely changed like the path yeah. of where we were going to go. I was actually about ready to go into the fire academy. Oh, wow. So I had all the paperwork set up ready to go in the fall yeah and then i just kind of pulled the trigger on let's go train with this guy because he was looking for sure a trainer yeah and i was like yeah cool why not Hmm. right sat down my wife talked about it and we just went for it yeah so eight months later i realized that hey i want to do this i want to own my own business i want to take this to a location that i know we could probably do pretty well in yeah um so we searched a bunch of different cities to see where we could kind of purchase hmm. into it. So it's a liability or a licensing, yeah. right? Yeah. And we purchased into this area. Yeah. Um, but the crazy thing about it is that we didn't even, we've never been here. <laughs> like I saw wow. a picture yeah. of the Reedy River yep. online. It's like always the first picture, like the bridge, yeah. the waterfall. Yep. Yeah. And that was it. Huh. Like we didn't have a place to stay. Wow. We didn't have anything. We we packed up like it was April of 2016. Yeah. And uh, we put all of our stuff in a pod from Florida mm-hmm. and moved it up here. Wow. Like our friends had a cabin up in uh, Brevard. Okay. So we stayed there for like two weeks and yeah. I was like, we were doing the drive back and forth every day because <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to build the business yep. and all that. Sure. And it just was like, I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm done. Right. So we eventually found a place to stay in Piedmont, lived there for about a year and then built the business. We got a, um, an office space. So we have a training center as well. Uh, and then we actually just purchased some land out in easily in December. Very cool. So that's the short version of like how life happened. Sure. Very, very quick. And so. Tell me about that transition. So the guy was looking for an additional trainer. Yep. You knew nothing about training dogs other than what didn't work right. on yours. Right. And so what was that training process of him training you to train dogs? Like how long of a period of time was that? And was it a lot of just like shadowing yeah. and watching what he did? Yep. So he actually had another trainer that... I kind of followed okay. and yeah, yeah. worked with for about a month and a half. Um, and I was still bartending at the time. So I was at night mm-hmm. so I could shadow them during the day and see yeah. what it was. Uh, and then they actually sent me up to Virginia, which is where off leash canine started. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and it's required that you go up there for gotcha. 17 so how many, days. How many different locations is 135. Holy cow, I had no idea. Yeah. Jeez, wow. Yep. And it's two international, I believe, right Holy now. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah so it's in that. every major yeah. city. Wow. Yep. Um, and kind of everybody is independently run and they do their own things and yeah. stuff, but there's a there's a standard that <laughs> we're going to follow. Yeah. Um, so transitioning, then I went up to Virginia for 17 days and that was like intensive, 15 mm-hmm. hours a day for 17 days. Yeah. Just learning dogs, learning behaviors. And then it was just getting right into it. You know what I mean? Like just going back and starting to train dogs. I first started with lessons and then I started doing board and trains where I take the dogs home and do that. Um, So that's kind of the transition of how that works. That's so interesting because in in our industry, in the insurance industry, that's the, the business that we own, you have so many sales coaches, sales trainers, and I'm just thinking about the dynamic between when a sales coach comes on board to do sales coaching with no experience and they have a sales coach that's teaching the sales coach. Right. It's like the exact same thing, yeah. um, which is ex- extremely interesting. So let's kind of dig into the process, basic, basic. 
process that you go through when you're training a dog because I think there'll be some interesting synergies in kind of what we do when we're training salespeople yeah. um, with that. And so what does that look like when you bring on a new client? I mean, so just so you guys know, like this morning he was training my dog. So, so like literally as I was sitting there watching, I was like, man, this is so interesting because I'm used to training other you know, salespeople um, and instantly thought like this would be the most incredible um, episode. So. You, you bring on a new family that has a new dog. What does that process look like when you're first entering the home and getting to know the dog? And what does that kind of process look like as you go into the, the steps of training? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because like you have a puppy, so there's a different yeah, process, sure, sure. right? But if I have dogs that are highly aggressive or super scared mm -hmm. or they're good dogs, but, and people always give me that, like yeah, my dog yeah. is really good. And I'm like, all right, when's the butt coming, right? But she does this, this, and this. So yeah. the process is- Let me stop right there. Is that, is the, it seems like, are the majority of people reaching out for lessons, not puppies, and are dogs that have like issues or problems or things that they're struggling with? Yes. Okay, that's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. So Which would be I the same get, in the coaching world, in the sales training world. Yeah, I do get puppies, but like you're saying, like a majority of it is, yeah. hey, my dog is like trying to kill all their dogs, right? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, my yeah. dog hates children and I'm having a baby <laughs> soon. I'm like, oh, yeah, we got some stuff to work yeah. on. Um, but it all comes down to developing the foundation okay. and basically taking back the house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because if you can leverage that stuff, then you can start to leverage a lot more things with the dog yeah. and the relationship actually changes. Yeah. It gets much better because it's very one sided, mm -hmm. right? A lot of the time, like yeah. aggressive cases, anxiety cases yeah. is the owners love the dog so much that they're giving them all the affection. And they're actually creating hmm. the problems. Yeah. Right, so like reward-based physical touch. If a dog's barking or jumping up on somebody and they pet the dog, yeah. the dog's learning, oh, that's yeah, how I, that's get I get petted, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, same thing with like barking or aggressively lunging. Like you see it a lot, like mm -hmm. dogs at the end of the leash and the owners pull them in and then hold them back. Yeah. Well, one, you're holding the dog back and two, you're holding the dog. <laughs> so the dog's learning. You're enabling basically. Yeah, yeah. yep. And then is, you're creating that. Which is interesting with I'm just like all these scenarios are running through my head of things that we deal with every single day. Like we'll have, you know, a salesperson they'll call and they'll say, Hey, um, you know, I need, I need help with such and such issue. And instead of telling that person and going through the 30 minutes of coaching on that person, we preach the system, the yeah. system, the yep. system. And so we're constantly trying to help our coaches help their teams in saying like that document in the back office, like, do you know where to find it? Like, right. let's go find it and, and you'd probably be amazed about what else is there. <laughs> right, right. There's all the other questions right. that you call me on constantly. But so many coaches, they choose to spend the 20 minutes in explaining and going through that process and helping them with that issue rather than spending the minutes showing them where they can go find the right. resources themselves. Yep. And it's only enabling them to call every single time that mm -hmm. they have an issue that they're calling. And this guy's just answering phone call after phone call of stuff that he could have just empowered them to go figure right. out themselves because right. all the systems have been uh, created, which is, which is interesting. And like, I'm just thinking like if last night I'm like laying on the couch, dog runs up and jumps up and starts scratching at the couch. And I'm like, well, I don't want you to freaking jump up and scratch on the couch. Right. But there's the tendency to be like, grab them and bring them up there. Right. Like, well, what does that teach them? That teaches them the way to get on the couch <laughs> right. is to freaking run up and start scratching on the couch right. versus just like saying no yep. and like sticking to that. Yeah. But it's, which it sounds so simple, right. but when you're in that moment, it makes sense. Like I want this to stop, so I'm right. going to stop it. Yeah. But you're actually just causing further bad behavior right. Right. Uh, or, or further um, bad, um, I don't know what the word for it is, but like, yeah, just reinforcing those bad Correct. behaviors. Uh, interesting. All right. So what's kind of the next step? So the next step is just figuring out like the protocol. So if I have an aggressive dog is 
we take that stuff back and we go into the basics again, like at 100% structure. Yeah. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go right into crate training. We're gonna go into structured walks. Yeah. We're gonna go into, you can't do these behaviors, but I'm gonna teach you how to do this, 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 and this, yeah. right? So it's a very balanced type of stuff. Like 85 to 90% of what we do is very positive based, but yeah. then there's the 10 that says like, no, like you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, it's just unacceptable. It's just exactly what we do with, with salespeople. It's, it's teaching the basics and what we know happens over time. Like let's say a script. Yep. We've taught them the script. They've memorized the script. They've mastered the script. A couple months go by, a word here and there starts to kind of modify. The way they deliver this area starts to, to morph. Next thing you know, it's a year and a half later and the scripts are now completely different. Right. But in their mind, they're doing the system, like they're teaching the script. And just like you said, you know, my dog's great, but when you talk to those people, they're like, I'm, I am, I'm executing this script, right. but it's not working. And we're like, okay, cool, let, let's role play. We're big on role play. So like, we're like, cool, like ring, 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 hello. And like, you know, role play with me. And we come to find out like, you're not saying any the thing right. that's on the script, but right. because it was like this slow, gradual change over time. And so we're immediately taking them back to the basics and we focus on from the very beginning, which is obviously what you would do with a puppy is teaching those basics, but teaching a culture of constant practice mm -hmm. to where you can't let that happen right. because you're constantly going back. Um, you know, it's, is it Vince Lombardi or who was it that like the first day of practice, like this is a football. You know, that, that whole right. concept Way, of like, like starting at the very, super very, simple, very, like what, like, what are you wearing when you walk in? Right. Like the way, like every little th aspect of the sales process we, we master and then we're constantly practicing, practicing, right. practicing, practicing. So, so they don't get to that point where they're going like, oh my gosh, like I've, I've gotten so far off right. that I don't even know how to get back. Um, so that's, that's extremely interesting. And, and again, the, the comparison usually the only time someone ever reaches out to us is when it's gotten really, right. really bad. And right. that's unfortunate. So we have to stay proactive and making sure that we're tracking people's numbers and tracking trends to make sure that we reach out to them and we have certain triggers. Like if their performance does this for a certain number of months in a row, like we know like that something is, is wrong. Right. And we even know like which area it is. Like if it's their uh, conversion, like their close ratio, we know that something's happening happening in the one-on-one -on -one meeting when they're actually trying to sell. Right. Versus if it's the number of um, the number of people that they're sitting in front of, we know that there's a problem with the phone call getting the appointment. Right. And so we know exactly what to take them back to and practice based on the trends that we're seeing because we don't want it to get to the point where they're now finally reaching out because it's almost at some point to the point of no return, which would be the only difference that I see here <laughs> is that at some point we have salespeople that were like, you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. And that's probably not the best scenario for you to be like, Hey, I've tried to work with your dog, but it's just going to be one of those, um, go out into the woods yeah. and just kind of like, Hey, you know, <laughs> Hey, like throw the ball and run kind of, <laughs> kind of a, a deal. Like you might want to start I over, don't condone you might want to start over with a new breed or something. <laughs> but uh, that would be the only major difference that I see. Like you kind of like you, would you say that every dog is fixable? And they're 98 percent of them. yeah unless there's like a rabies and they well <laughs> yeah like that or like there's a chemical imbalance mm. with like the dog just doesn't isn't there yeah i've yeah. had that tough conversation yeah. oh, yeah. with with clients like look at your dog is not here it's somewhere else like it just doesn't exist it's just like a traumatic it could have been just like dna like... genetics played a part in it oh you mean like it's always been it's like, been it's like that you know what i mean and like because people go oh my dog just randomly snaps or it's staring at the wall and i'm like one <laughs> you gotta make sure your house isn't haunted <laughs> <laughs> two is like there's something there get yeah. some blood work stuff but i think the biggest thing with what you're saying about scripts and changing is everybody wants to have that end result there, they want it fast, yeah. right? And yeah. like what we do sure. is we do really quick kind of turnover stuff in like training. Yeah. So we can skip a lot of that process stuff. 
But what happens is they go, oh, cool, now my dog's trained. I can stay complacent. Yeah. And complacency kills all dog training, mm-hmm. just like it does for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there are clients that I go, hey, this is not working. Mm. Right? Like, this is what I need you to do. And if you're not willing to do it, I cannot help. Yeah. Because I'm doing, I'm more focused in on the dog. And when I take over the leash or when I do that stuff, yeah, it's my job to. Mm. But there's a different level of like trust and respect that the dog has with me. Yeah. And you, I can build that relationship very, very, very fast. Yeah. It's almost like we, we talk about the fact that there really is no neutral. That if you're not practicing and growing and getting better, it's impossible to stay the same. Like you will get worse. Mm-hmm. And I would think that's a direct correlation to with what you're doing. Like. If you train a dog to a certain point and then you just stop, yeah. it will not stay at that level. It will only digress over time. Like there's, well, it'll the only it'll go to what makes it more pleasurable for itself. Yeah. Which is man, that's profound. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, yeah. that's what dogs want. They mm-hmm. want to increase pleasure and yeah. de- decrease that's pain. That's what people want as well. It's the like, same it's the exact same, same thing. thing. And so the interesting thing in that is I've been learning a lot lately about how like the actual brain works in that if you try to stay the same, if my goal is just like to maintain where I'm at, that your brain will literally create right. problems because you were born to fix things, you were born to accomplish, you were born to solve problems. And so you're literally, your brain will create problems, struggles and things for you to have to overcome just to be able to stay the same. Right. Which is crazy, and the same amount of effort that it's gonna that it's gonna take for you to get to the next level, it's gonna take that same amount of effort for you to stay the same, right? Because your body literally will create a scenario for you to have to overcome, because that's just what you, that's what humans are born to do. They're born to to fix problems and to and to overcome struggles. Which, when you get to that level of it, that to me is like the ultimate um, encouragement. Right in trying to get people to be constant learners and constantly growing and constantly, you know, refining their craft. Um, so let's talk about, um, some of those things that when you get into a house and you're instilling these kind of like basic skills that you talked about, what does that look like as far as when you exit and then you're kind of giving them their marching orders to the family of like, hey, here's what it needs to look like moving forward. And then how often do you end up coming back to those families six months down the road, a year down the road? Because let's be honest, the majority of families probably don't ever stick to right. what they're supposed to do. Right. So what does that look like for them? Like, hey, I've done what, what I need to do to get it to this point. Like, right. here's what you guys can do moving yeah. forward. So like our programs, we offer lifetime free refreshers for the dogs. That's awesome. Right, cool. in, in one of the programs. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm all about giving away a bunch of free stuff. Like mm-hmm. I have a bunch of knowledge about like how the brains work on the dogs. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're having a problem? Cool, I'll be there. Yeah, right? that's awesome. But the dogs won't all, they'll, they'll never lie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like when I was doing <laughs> lessons yeah. is I would ask the people, I go, how'd this week go? Yeah. They go, oh, went great, did a little of this, we did this. <laughs> and I go, okay. And then I start working with the uh, dog and I go. do anything. <laughs> Well, you spend a couple of days and they yeah. go, no, you know, it's like, they do like in, it's like when I was in the second grade and I played the piano and like, I always like just practice for like 10 minutes before the piano teacher right. got there. And I'd been allegedly practicing all week. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right. Like, all right, right, well, let's see. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. I can't hide. Right. <laughs> so it's funny because then I can call out the owners. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. more now, like in the beginning phases, I would like very tiptoeing on yeah, yeah. how to be. Yeah. But now I'm very like blunt. Yeah. Like, cool, you guys didn't do this? All right, we're gonna practice it again. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to let you fail, right? Yeah. Unless you want to. Sure. And that's Unless you like, wanna continue paying right. for absolutely nothing. Right. Like like if you want me here every day Fine, doing I'll the job here. for you, like, <laughs> right. sure, that's I'll do it. be expensive. But <laughs> um but I'm also starting to hold everybody accountable. Uh I'm starting to do more group classes and, and pack yeah. walks and stuff and it's um just like your wife is I'm like, hey, you need to send me a video yeah. of you training. Gotcha. Because one, it, yeah, it goes awesome. I can go, all right, awesome. Your timing was good here. This is what you need to work on. Yeah. So it's a very like, yep, that's great. Yep. Don't do this. 
practice this. Mm -hmm. And then the next video, I can see the change in the dog. So I'm focusing in on the dog and yeah. seeing what it is. And there's sometimes I was like watching a video she sent me and it's like, the timing was just a little off and I'm like, ah, you missed it, right? Like just <laughs> yeah, marking yeah. the behaviors. That's interesting. Um, but then I also, for like the board and train, so when they go home, like we train them for two weeks and they can be off leash, reliable, downtown, dog dependent. And yeah. that's kind of now making like my decision, hey, can your dog be off leash? Yeah. Mm, not really, Yeah. right? So then I set up protocols and I go, this is what the steps are for you to be successful for at least the next six months. Mm -hmm. And then we'll reassess what that is yeah. after that six months. So the interesting thing in that, like accountability obviously is key in everything. And especially in sales, um, when we're dealing with like sales managers and you know, the leaders, team leaders, we have to give them these structures to be able to hold their salespeople accountable and I hate to dumb it down this much and call a salesperson a dog, but but you can't you can't ask a dog to hold themselves accountable. Right. It's impossible. Right. I would say that the majority of salespeople, if left alone, will not hold themselves accountable. And so it's about building those structures in place, like what you said, like with video. It's, it's that's exactly like the, what we do. Like we do role play videos that they right. have to certify every so often. And we do accountability video conferences where I'm going through their goals and like, hey, like how did this go for the last month? Right. Okay, let's talk about that. Like what happened? Like what was the issue there? And, and we work through that stuff because if left alone, it just doesn't happen. Right. And so it's all about building that, that structure of accountability. Um, so let's, let's kind of take it to the, the final step and let's talk about like, what's your ideal scenario for a family and a dog? Like what are the scenarios you go into where you're like, man, this is like, this is, I love this. Like the, they're, they're, the family's participating, they're, they're practicing when I'm not there. Like, what does that kind of look like? Yeah. So that's, that is like after I've seen the, the owners put in that work, yeah. right? Like I've seen that that progression, like, and they are like super happy with what's happening yeah. with it. Um, I can only give you so much information for you to take it, yeah. right? But then that's where that accountability comes in at the end is like really making sure. And then we shoot an amazing video. I just had a lesson client that's doing an eight week course, yeah. doing off leash healing in downtown Greenville yeah. in like high volume stuff. Mm -hmm. But they put in the work, yeah, and that shows, you know, because then I use that and I go, okay, this is you can absolutely get here, yeah. But there's every week and every day there's little bits of steps that have to, yeah. And occur. and I would imagine it's pretty rewarding on your side because once they've gotten there, like they're probably in a very like they're probably super happy, like they yeah. they've got like this great pet now that now is not not only not a nuisance anymore and it's not like a burden that's like like yeah they're great but like every time you know someone comes in our yard it's like this huge ordeal right we're now like they're like super happy because they've got this obedient dog right. and they're like obviously they've built the relationship now and, and it's so much better tell me this though i fly a lot yeah i've always wondered what how in the world these dogs that come on planes like what do you train for that? Like I was literally wondering the other day because like now I have this new dog. It's a miniature golden doodle. Like it's not a gigantic. I've always had big dogs. And I'm like, well, that'd be interesting to be able to fly with a dog at some point. Like if we go on a trip. But I'm thinking to myself like I don't hear these dogs. And I'm like, are they giving this dog like massive amounts of Benadryl? <laughs> or like, like is there special training for being able to like if someone says like I travel a lot I want to be able to travel with my dog like is that something that is a real thing yeah so but that's more for service dogs true I'm talking about like the people that had like the that like carry their like so like, they're technically like falsifying and like yeah like what that dog is so it's like an yeah. emotional support animal gotcha where like it's the pigs like, that you see on yeah like that's a joke on planes. like there's it's not you know what i mean like yeah they make pills for anxiety <laughs> yeah. you know like you don't yeah, need to yeah. bring your parakeet yeah. on the because normally the i guess they fly in the cargo i guess yeah interesting yep yeah. um but in order to do that if you did do the service side of that stuff like we don't do any of that but gotcha. there's there's 
hundreds of dogs that do fly yeah, yeah, yeah. and can do that yeah, and sure. there are specific things that you have to train are there specific dog. breeds that are easier to train than others like just to put it even more simple like are there smarter breeds of dogs yeah yeah like way like, like noticeably like holy crap like i'm so glad i'm going to this new client's house because they have a this versus like oh crap i just got this new and it's one of those well, so there's a lot of like working dog lines are like okay. Malinois and German Shepherds yeah. and Rotties and Pitties. Yeah. Right? Like I love working with all those dogs. Yeah. But I also love working with like the Golden Doodles. Yeah. The Golden Doodles are actually probably one of my favorite because yeah. they're so smart and not because it's you have that dog, <laughs> right? That's not blowing smoke up there, right? <laughs> but it's, it's because they have the Golden Retriever or mm-hmm. Labradoodles or whatever. And then they have the poodle yeah. side of it. Yeah, so yeah. two very smart dogs. very awkward dogs. to think about. Yeah. Having, yeah, no, I know. Especially when the toy poodle side. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of weird. So, but that's, those are the fun ones. Like the puppies are fun, but also like the aggressive cases are fun. Yeah. Because you can change the way that the dog thinks. Hmm. And when you see that, you see like the light bulb go off in the yeah. dog's head. It goes, cool, I just saved this dog's life. Like I have, yeah. I have three, awesome. three of my dogs. We actually, funny story. We just found another dog today. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. And it looks exactly like my dog Hampton, <laughs> like to the T. It's just a female version <laughs> yeah. of it. Wow. And I'm like, what is going on? Because Hampton <laughs> brought us on this incredible journey. Yeah. And now this cool. dog is like, could take us on this incredible yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah. And but we saved like three of our dogs were pretty much on death row mm-hmm. right and so we saved them and now they have the best life ever yeah you know what i mean because there was a consequence for doing dumb stuff sure right yeah, but then yeah. there was also like you can be off leash and do whatever you want anytime yeah anytime that's interesting so i have to tell this story just because it's so bizarre so um my parents they've always had dogs um my dad gave my mom a basset hound as their wedding gift. Um, they love basset hounds. They've had a bunch of them. And this last basset hound, I mean, they got this dog. It just recently passed. Um, but they had, like, basset hounds don't live all that long. They had this dog for like 16 years. Oh, wow. 15 years. Like, very, very old yeah. for a basset hound. So back when I was in college, it got this like, uh, he got this like rapid like glaucoma that like the overnight eye just like blew up like crazy. They had to remove the eye. What? So the eyelid shut, one eyed dog, one eyed best down. Which is, like best towns are so just like goofy and like right. silly and funny looking. Anyways, then you remove an eye and it's just like <laughs> now you got this one eyed best down. I think. Eight months to a year later, happened to the other eye. Took the other eye out. What? And so for the last like 10 years, 12 years, something like that, my parents have had a eyeless, <laughs> like no eye, like I don't know the way, like a basset hound with no eyes. Yeah. And the eyelids are just sewed so shut. And it was always so funny because you would, uh, you'd say, uh, his name was Brewster. And you'd say like, Brewster, <laughs> like Brewster, and it would just kind of go like, <laughs> See, like the eyebrows <laughs> yeah it's like kind of sad um and my parents move a lot which i used to like talk about was like the worst practical joke ever because like just by the time this poor dog is getting used to like the arrangement of furniture they would like move a couple years later um and you would this dog would like just be full stride and just just like run into like coffee tables oh, and like man. chair legs and it was just like the saddest thing but and like people would be like oh you have a like it has no eyes like what you know but quality of life is just a lazy best sound. This dog was had the best life yeah. ever because it just slept and laid around, and my parents treated it like royalty. Right. You know, like when it died, like it was a big deal. Like they're like, we're never getting a dog Dang. again ever um, because of how like traumatic it was because of this no eyed, eyeless basset hound. Um, That's crazy. And over the last like probably two years, I would every they they live in Georgia and I used to travel in Georgia a lot with with work. And anytime I was like within a couple hours, like I'd, I'd stop by, spend the night. And I'd sit there in this basset hound with no eyes, I'd be laying in, in a little dog bed. And I know at this point, like, it's only a matter of time. Dogs, like, they just don't live that long. Right. 
and it started to lose its hearing a little bit. And so we'd sit there at night before we go to bed, and they'd be like, Brewster, let's go out. You know, it's time to go to bed. Let's let's go outside. And I'd be like, Brewster, Brewster. And I'm like, dear, <laughs> I'm like, dear God, please give this dog one more day because I'm only here one night. Oh man. Do not let this dog die right <laughs> right now. Well, I mean, well, I'm here for one night. Like, I can't, I can't be here for oh. this. <laughs> and I'm like, Brewster, freaking wake up. Just and then all of a sudden, tail, and all, and all he'd be like, oh, oh. And then he'd just like waddle on outside and bump into a few things and go to the bathroom. And Ugh. I'm like, oh, thank God. It's like the old man that doesn't hear anything and then yeah. all of a sudden just hears yeah, everything. Yeah, just like, oh my gosh. God, it's, it's so funny. And, and the last thing I'll mention before we close here is in the sales training arena, especially like on social media. What drives us crazy is that you've got coaches that all they've ever done is coach. All they've ever been successful in is selling coaching. Right. But they can't really, like they never really had to sell anything themselves. Right. Do you see in the dog training business, dog trainers that have terribly trained dogs, like, or that don't even have mm -hmm. dogs? Mm -hmm. Like, does that happen? Yeah. So, so the, the, that's funny because my dogs have their like little quirks and they have sure, their sure, issues sure, sure, and sure. stuff, and, but I can fix them. Yeah, you know, like yeah, I yeah. know the tools to, mm -hmm. to change it, right? So like they give me a problem, I can fix it. Yeah. However, 95% of people don't have those tools to do that. Yeah. Um, but then there are trainers that will actually, um, it's funny, but <laughs> <laughs> they will hire a dog trainer to train their dog so that they can have a dog that looks good, a demo dog. And they, I've heard like multiple people purchasing it's like renting dogs. a Lamborghini, mm -hmm. throwing it up on social media. Right. Like it's the biggest thing that drives us crazy. Like we see like social media agencies and like there's been times over the last two years where I've been looking for a social media agency to help in certain areas. And the first thing I do is I'm Googling, you know, digital marketing agency, social media agency, Atlanta or Greenville or wherever. I'm like, oh, this one, oh, great website, cool. First thing I do is check their Instagram page, right. 300 followers. And I'm like, <laughs> how can you talk about growing people's Instagram and growing people's personal brand and you're not even doing it yourself. Right. And it's like the fat personal trainer. Like, right. I'm not going to go to a personal trainer that's obese. Yeah. You know, like... I just wondered. That's that's fascinating. It's funny you wonder that up. Like you're, I... you're like training dogs all day long, and then you go home to like chaos with like your one <laughs> devil dog that like you're just like I'm done training. I yeah. can't do it. And like I get it on social media side. You spend so much time doing all this stuff, and you're like when it comes to your own, you're like oh this is like all I do. Like I just don't want to do it. Well, it's the shoemaker's like son, that. right? Like yeah. it's it's yeah. the same concept. But yeah. if you want to be better. Because there's different techniques that you can do. And, and if yeah. you want to make yourself better, you have your dogs to practice on <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah. Well, there's tons of dogs in the shelters that you can just pull yeah, and say, true. like, hey, I'm going to try to train this true. dog. That's true. Do you find, um, and this will be the third time I'll say this is the last thing and we'll close. Um, so our last dog that we had, uh, we got at um, the Humane Society. It was an awesome dog. Um, our daughter ended up being allergic when we had her. That's why we got the Golden Dude, yeah. because they're hypoallergenic, uh, which has been great. Um, but she was the best dog. She's a lab Weimaraner mix. Yep. And um, do you find like such awesome cases? I hear so many great stories of people like Humane Society bringing them in. Have you trained a lot of those dogs? And are there any like specific issues you see? Or do they like it seems like they're always end up being like the best dogs? So, yes and no. So, two of the dogs that I currently have were from Humane Society because okay. they won super high energy. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right. But then in, in scenarios like that, you know, like they, they all do very good. Like they're taking dogs in, they're pulling other dogs from kill shelters and yeah. stuff too. Yeah, yeah. So like I respect what they do, but yeah. then there's, it's like moving an insane person to a not so like insane area, but you're still confined. Yeah. You know, so that yeah, yeah. the dogs are getting stuck in this, like, well, I'm, I'm going to go to home. I might act crazy, yeah. you know, like can't bouncing off the walls and stuff yeah. and like the people can't handle it. Like Sophie, one of my dogs, she's was returned four times. Back to the Humane Society. Back to the Humane Society. Ninja, the other one, was imagine. returned a few that times. That would be the worst feeling ever. Mm -hmm. Like, we changed our mind. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. So, uh, can't do it. And that's, I, God, I you know, sucks. like I really am trying to like, I, I want to push for 
bringing that kind of like to the forefront like hey the only time that i think you should return a dog is like your example yeah right like sure or if you legitimately there is a chemical imbalance with that dog that nobody caught yeah. kind of slipped through yeah, the cracks because yeah. those happen too yeah but just because you, that dog doesn't fit into your lifestyle yeah. right or you want a dog to snuggle with <laughs> and it's not it's that's not so it's what it take work wants to, to get them do. there yeah, yeah. like invest in and i'm not plugging i am but invest in training yeah because it's going to be the best decision that you make sure and i don't care what kind of training yeah but do something with your dog yeah, yeah. versus Try. going like oh man like i've had this dog for two days like it's tearing yeah. up everything in my house. Well, have you done anything with it other than tried to like let it be your lap yeah. dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you haven't. That's awesome. And it's putting in that work and like really, mm-hmm. like a dog's not an easy thing. Yeah. You know, but once you get the dog to be able to accommodate your lifestyle yeah. versus you accommodating the dog's lifestyle, mm-hmm. and I think that's where a lot of people make that mistake is like they want it, they go, I'm gonna rescue this dog from the Humane Society or animal care or yeah. anything like that. And they go, I wanna give you everything. Yeah. Because I don't know what your past was like. Yeah. I go, well, who cares about your past? Because yeah. if I can change your, your future, mm-hmm. right? Like that past, yeah, right? But they don't develop like ridiculous amounts of PTSD. Some do. Sure. But most of that time you can reset it. Yeah. You know? And once you do that, then you have a different dog. Yeah. And now you have a trust and respect and stuff like that. And that's probably the best way we could close this out. And to me, like it's all about that creates the best lifestyle for the family is when you've put the work in. Right. That's what creates the best lifestyle for a salesperson is when they've put the work in. And we talk all the time about the only way you can truly be all in at home and all in on your lifestyle is when you are all in at work. Like that's the problem most people is they don't go all in at work and so their lifestyle becomes terrible because they're always behind and late and and too much month at the end of their money and and all that. But just like you're saying, like when you put the work in and you build that relationship and the structure, then you've got like the best scenario ever with your dog just like the salesperson that's putting in the work every single day and they're going out there and they're getting results and they become fulfilled. Like that's where the fulfillment comes right. from is not just from having success, it's from putting in work right. and then having the success and reaping uh, the rewards. So man, I appreciate you being on here. This was yeah. as interesting as I thought it <laughs> would be. And it was there was actually way more similarities as we got into it that I could have gone through a hundred more scenarios. Right. Like that's, I was literally thinking about people that, 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 that I've trained, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that guy was a freaking pit bull right. that had a very bad past <laughs> and he may have been not worth saving. Right. But, <laughs> but this is awesome. This is the Sales Wolves podcast, episode 83. What did we title it again? It was uh, Working, Working Like, like a Dog. A dog. Uh, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Chris Buell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow.